It's really easy. I think all of my recipes are easy, to be honest. One time I got a message from someone who was like, I wish your recipes were harder. And I was like, things no one says. Um, Hi, I'm Eric Kim. I'm a cooking writer for the New York Times food section. Today, I have a really simple, easy, impressive dessert. It is a cookies and cream pavlova. This is sort of an homage to what a pavlova could be. There's a lot of history, and I'm trying to choose my words wisely. We have um, a food stylist here who's Australian. You know, he's adamant that the pavlova is Australian. If you asked anyone from New Zealand, they would be adamant that it's from New Zealand. Okay, here's one thing I can say. I'm not gonna try to pretend to know like the origins, you know, in terms of nationality. The story goes that Anna Pavlova, the Russian prima ballerina, wanted an original solo ballet created just for her. Look up Anna Pavlova, um, The Dying Swan. She's danced it 4,000 times, so I think you'll, you won't have trouble looking for it. There's the, the part at the end where she's like, sorry, this is really embarrassing, actually. but I'll show you. I'll show you because it's a video. Um, you know, she like goes up, and then she like looks like she's about to fly, and then at the very end, she kind of like, her limbs start to like falter, and there's a lot of like movement, and you know, and then she collapses. That's sort of what a Pavlova does. Sorry for the heavy-handed metaphor, but this dessert is nothing but metaphor because it's named after this wonderful prima ballerina. And instead of focusing on where it came from, I'd like to focus on, on her. You really only need four ingredients for it. Oreos, egg whites, sugar, heavy cream, and a little salt. This is all gonna happen very quickly. It's really satisfying to watch. So there are a few ways to separate eggs. One way to do it is to use the shells as your, you know, little cups. I like using cold eggs because then there's less of a likelihood of the yolk piercing and like cracking. Another way to separate the eggs and the yolks is to, you let it fall through your fingers and you just cradle it back and forth. See, because this egg is so cold, it's very separate from the yolk. And you don't want any yolk in here. You don't want fat. It's gonna make your meringue not like stabilize. We're just getting it frothy for this first step. Oh, I, I usually like to add the salt early too. This is a stage at which I would start adding the sugar. And as you add the sugar, the egg whites will really fluff up and then they will be shiny and glossy and stabilized because of all this sugar. And this is still too soft, but I just wanted to show you what soft peaks look like. What it means is you put the whisk into the bowl when you take it out and you flip it Ooh, that's pretty good. Um, but the peak kind of did this. It like did like a little Santa hat. So I want it to be a little stiffer. So the reason you are gradually adding the sugar while it's coming up, instead of adding all the sugar at the very end, like when it's already at this stage, it's because you want the sugar to dissolve in the time that it takes to come to stiff peaks. Is that gonna stiff peak? <gasps> So stiff. Look at the little baby. You're supposed to be able to turn it upside down without it falling. And that's how we know it's a stiff peak. This is the part that's a little less traditional. I'm gonna add some chocolate sandwich cookies. I love the way it speckles this blindingly white mountain range. And they don't have to be very small or anything. As they bake, what you end up with is a pavlova that has pockets of like gooey chocolate inside and it's really lovely. But it, I'm just taking like a flat edge, you know, spoon, spatula, whatever. I'm folding the Oreos into the meringue instead of just stirring. If I just stirred, it would become like this gray blob. This is folding, this, mo this movement. I don't do it too much. That's good enough for me. And then now I'm gonna mound it. So you want like an eight to nine inch round and it's about an inch, two inches high. But as you see, the way I do it is like, I'm not very precious about it. You're gonna like slice this like a cake, you know? And that's also gonna spread a little bit in the oven, so I like to do this. Like, what's gonna turn it into like an eight to nine inch round is this motion. I like to, I kinda wanna take, use a spoon actually. Yum. I took like a smaller spoon. You could use a spatula, but I like having control. I like create the crater that the whipped cream is gonna go into. I don't overdo it. I try to just keep it, let it be. I think there are a lot of ways to be fancy about it, but I'm happy with that shape. And I'm, again, not condoning this, but it's going into a 250 degree oven. This is parchment paper. How easy was that? 
Jeffrey's gonna love this. <laughs> so that has to bake for about an hour and a half. You know, I think of it less as baking and more as drying the meringue out. You want to dry it out so that it becomes that crackled, crispy, chewy and gooey on the inside pavlova that is gonna be so delicious to slice into and have with uh, maybe a little coffee, tea, glass of milk. Pavlova's out of the oven. We're just gonna let it cool now. And as it cools, you're gonna notice it deflating in baking anyway, that, that's like a sign of chewiness and that is the great joy of a pavlova, I think. While that's cooling, we're gonna make the whipped cream. You wanna you know, start with cold whipped cream. Cold whipped cream whips up easier. This whipped topping isn't that sweet, especially because we're gonna add a lot of salt. I mean, in fact, I'll just add a lot. I'm adding like a fat pinch. Like this whipped cream, I consider it a salted whipped cream. Cream itself is you know, the thing that offsets the sweetness of the cookie. Two tablespoons of sugar. It's not like an egg white that requires, you know, preciousness. Like whipped cream will always whip up. Like the meringue, we're just adding air. You know, with the meringue, we were trying to get stiff peaks, right? It's that point that stays upright. With this, we're trying to get soft peaks. <laughs> this is a soft peak because it went like boop. I'm going to now just add it to my wonderful pavlova. Adding it to the top. Mm. We're gonna slice into it. It's gonna be messy. It's a pavlova, it's okay. If you're serving it, think of it like a cake. And just, did you hear that? It's a meringue. You wanna get like nice clean cuts. I see this crisp meringue edge. I know the inside's gonna be mellow-y. Mmm, that's a perfect bite, okay. Mmm. You see the, the Oreo right there? The one that was baked into the pavlova. That part is gooey, shiny, moist. It's like, almost like a decadent, like dark chocolate cake. But it's just Oreo that's been baking in these egg whites. Mmm. When I think of cookies and cream, I would say that this is definitely the, the pinnacle. I hope you try this for yourself because it's, it's really, truly so easy. 